there is a design conversation that is never resolved, never complete. It is circular, elusive, forever out of reach. It's a conversation in which ostensibly the landscape has agency, spontaneous, unplanned agency. But even that agency is treated like a noxious weed and threatened with extinction, exposed to toxic architectural design terrorism. Marion Short, an English environmentalist who studies the edge lands, the interfacial interzone between urban and rural, a hot mix of rubbish tips, superstores, office parks, rough hewn farmland, gas towers, electricity pylons, wildlife and service stations. The edge lands are an apparently unplanned, certainly uncelebrated and largely incomprehensible territory. Assured, the naked functionalism of the edgelands allows its essential architecture and infrastructure to find its own accommodation with nature, evolving silently and unhindered. For example, the clutter of the interface, which would be tidied out of sight by those concerned with creating an acceptable landscape there, often enhances wildlife by creating new niches that wild creatures can exploit. Throw an empty milk crate into a lake and while it may look untidy, fish will swim in and out of it and use it as part of their ecological world. In the edgelands, even the much maligned electricity pylon is far from the eyesore of common law. For sure, its very presence is a visual reminder that certain plants flourish, not on naturally occurring soil, but a substrate of the dark grey powder of pulverised fly ash deposited from a local power station years ago. The enmeshing of natural and human agency has become so total now that it seems impossible, much less desirable, to disconnect from it. By refusing to acknowledge this, we risk losing forever our chance to effect real change. Will architects listen? Can architecture avoid the type of wishy-washy, nature-first, eco-criticism that characterises the discourse of sustainability? Perhaps the question is not, will architects listen, but can they?